Hello, I'm Mr. Howard, and in this video we are going to review some basics of classes and objects, and then we're going to use our IDE JGrasp to uh, troubleshoot the code and also uh, show you how you can create these objects on the canvas right here in JGrasp and track your uh, objects and the related variables. So let's go through this code that we're going to use first and discuss what's happening and, and review our vocabulary here. So we have our main blueprint class over here. Uh, it's called Dice. And then we have our runner class over here where we actually have our main method. So let's start over here in our, our main class. So a class has three major components. As we've discussed, you've got your uh, private instance variables up top, then uh, it's appropriate to put your constructors next, and then your methods. So private instance variables, your constructor or constructors, depending on how many you have, and then your methods after that. So if we look at this class here, we have two private instance variables called die1 and die2. They are integers. Then we have a constructor right here, a single constructor, where we are making uh, a dice object. And notice the constructor always has the same name as the class itself. And unlike the uh, methods, it does not have a return type. So that's that's how another way you can spot these when you're just learning. Now down here we have one, two, three, four, five different methods. We have a void method right here. We have integer methods here. And then we have a Boolean method down here. And if we notice each one of these methods, void, int, 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 and Boolean, they always have a return type. You always have to have a return type for those methods. And again, that's how you can spot the difference between a constructor and a method. Also, with a constructor, it must, it should have the same name as your class. So let's look through here. So we've got our constructor here. We're taking our two instance variables, die1 and die2, and setting them equal to zero when we construct this dice object. We have a method, a void method called roll. Remember, a void method returns nothing. You notice there is no return statement inside this method. And all we're doing is setting a random value from one to six for die1 and for die2 there. And we're using math.random and casting it as an integer there. Because remember, math.random returns a floating point value. And uh, the numbers on a dice are integers, so it's appropriate here to cast them as such. So uh, we will get a random integer from 1 to 6 for those two. Then when we use the getTotal method, that's going to return. Notice it's an integer method, therefore it should return an integer. and it is going to sum die1 plus die2. We have a get die1 method here, and it returns an integer because its return type is int, and it will return the value of die1, which is going to be set up here. Then we have get die2, that returns the value of die2. It's an integer method, therefore it should return an integer, and it does. And then we have a boolean here, and we have an if statement if die one is equal to die two so in other words if we roll doubles we'll return true otherwise we'll return false it is a boolean method therefore it needs to return a boolean value okay now looking over here at our main method class here the dice runner class remember we always need a main method if we tried to just run this over here it wouldn't do anything we have to have this main method uh, before we can uh, do anything so this uh, inside the main method we're actually going to use everything over here in our uh, main class. So the first thing that we're doing is we're creating a new dice object called D in this case. Uh, we are then going to call the roll method so it's going to send us over here and roll and we're going to get random numbers assigned. Then we're going to take uh, and we're going to create four variables here uh, three ints and a boolean and we're going to set those equal to the d.getTotal so we're using the the d object that we made up here 
and we are going to call the get total, then the get die one, get die two, and set those equal to these values here. So the get total method, remember, is just returning die one plus die two. The uh, get die one is going to get the value of die one and return it, and the get die two method is going to get the value of dice two or die two and return it. And then the boolean is doubles is going to return the value here, either true or false, using the doubles method. Then we are going to print out the total, the die one val, the die two val, and to the screen. And then we are going to check if we rolled a double. If we did, we'll say yes. Otherwise, it won't say anything. Then we repeat the process. So then we'll roll again here. We'll take the variables we've already created. Notice we created them up here. Therefore, we don't need int right here. If you did that, you would get an error. We don't need int anymore. We already know totals in int because we said so up here. So we're going to set all those values again right here. And then we're going to print all that just like we did before. And then we're going to check if we have doubles. And so we're going to print yes. So that is a description of what's going on in the code and a review of our vocabulary. So quickly, one more time, we have private instance variables first. We'll use another color here. And then after that, we have our constructor. So right there, covering it up. And then the next section would be our methods, and that's in that section right there. So three different sections. So uh, your private instance variables, then your constructor or constructors, it's okay to have more than one, and then your methods. So that's the common layout. All right, let's move on to JGRASP and work through this. Okay, so now we're here in JGrasp and we're going to use this canvas tool to actually create our objects, run through the code, create the objects, and watch our variables change. And that, especially when you're first learning, it's nice to uh, make the creation of objects a little more tangible so you can actually see it on the screen. And that's what this allows you to do. It's also great for debugging your code if something's not outputting what you expect. So we click the icon right here for the canvas. Move this out of the way. And if you notice, it's already starting to run our code here. So this button right here is the one you want to keep clicking because it'll go uh, one line at a time. And so now we're in the main class. We uh, called our construct. We specified that we wanted to use our constructor so it sent us over to the main class here and we're going through the dice constructor uh, method there or pardon me it's not a method it's a constructor so we're complete there and now we have created an object right here as soon as we uh, ran this line you noticed it went to the uh, main class and we actually created a dice object and here it is and once I make this object I can drag it over here and drop it and there's the dice object and it has its two instance variables uh, die one and die two so we'll keep running and now we are we just called the roll method so it sent us to the main class we're going to get a random number for die one you see here it pops in as four in this case get a random number for die two you see it pops in right there in red any changes will always highlight in red okay the next thing we do we're back to the uh, runner class and we're setting int total equal to d dot get total so once we run that we're going to see these variables start showing up so one more click and there's the total variable drag it over and keep running so now we uh, just called the get die one method so it sent us to the main class we grab it and then we set it and now we can access that value drop it over here in the canvas keep going we're returning die two now and there it is we can drag it over now we're uh, running our public boolean where we called that method and its value is stored in the is doubles. Currently it's equal to false. 
So once I've ran through it once, I have everything that I wanted in from my code. I've got the object right here, and I've got each of the variables. The total variable is an integer, die one value is an integer, die two val integer, and then the boolean here. And also it's showing uh, my dice object that I created right here. That would be this one. And it has the values of four and five. So if I keep running, we're printing stuff down to the screen. You can see it down here. So if you weren't running your canvas, you can use that to, to see what's happening. And we are now checking, we're checking that doubles method and we're going to print yes, if they were doubles, they weren't because we had four and five. Now we're rolling again, so we're going to change these values. So it looks like die one stayed as a four, die two is now one. Then we're going to set the values, so we're going to watch those change. So total is now five. You see it popped in red. Keep going. Uh, the die one value didn't change, so it's still four. The die two value changed, and there it is right there. Go to the next line, and then is die one equal to die two? No, it's not. So our is doubles variable should stay false. And it did. Then we print. And then we're trying to decide if we should print true or false there. And then it didn't print anything because the doubles was returning false. So we didn't print anything there. Okay, so we've ran through it completely. And now we have this, uh, basically this canvas is created. So if I just click save, now I can go to run and I can run a whole new set and run all the way through it. And you can click one line at a time. Well, there's the dice object being created. Uh, we have a die one of six, die two of two. Keep running. Total populates with eight. Six and two is, is eight. So we know that's working right. Keep going. Die one value should be six, check. Die two value should be two, check. Keep going. They are not doubles, so that should be false, so we'll keep going. Okay, die one, we just made a new random there, it's now one. Die two is three, so we're going to watch these variables change. Total is now four, one plus three is four, check. That's working right. Die one is one. Die two is three, there it just changed. And they are not doubles, so our is doubles boolean is going to stay false because it's still false. And we're at the end, so we've completed another run. Now we can run it again. Run. Okay, so now if to show you what happens if you click this button. So this is stepping one line at a time, but if we want to run all the way through it, a little faster we can click that button and it just speeds up a little bit so we still haven't got any doubles so we'll keep running until we do so we can check that okay six and a four that's not gonna do it one and one there we go we've got doubles one and one so our total is two check dive out one check Dival 2 1. Now we should see our is doubles change to true, and it does. So we've basically checked all the conditions. We're making sure it's working. We're actually seeing these objects, in this case a dice object, being created, and we can watch these variables change. So once you set this up and you save it, then you can run through it multiple times and, and see what kind of various test cases you can run through and make sure that your code is working correctly. All right, so that was a review of objects and classes, some basic vocabulary, and then we use JGrasp to, and the canvas, which we, in our class, we haven't used before, and that allows us to watch these objects be created and watch the variables uh, change along the way. So that can be useful for students to see, and that's just another way you can check your code. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.